CataractCoach.com. For refraction that's hyperopic with astigmatism, would you perform the eye well surgery? Remember, the, there's no cataract present. So the question is, should we do a refractive lens exchange on someone just to treat a refractive error? And it does depend on whether or not the patient has a cataract, and it also depends on the patient's age. And the question I asked here was, what about 30 years old, 50 years old, 70 years old? What's the difference there? Well, the difference is accommodation. So for a young person, a 30-year-old person, there's still great accommodation. At 30 years old, you have many doctors of accommodation. And if we address the refractive error for distance, let's say with contact lenses or even spectacles, even glasses, well then, you can use natural accommodation to have a full wide range of natural vision. So you can see intermediate, you can see up close. It's seamless. It's the way that we were created. It's the best. And we don't have a man-made lens, at least not yet, that's going to give us that level of accommodation. There are new lenses on the horizon, like the one I'm involved in, the Juvene lens from LensGen, and that does give a surprisingly large amount of accommodative amplitude. This patient you're looking at, is 70 years old. And you can see there's the lens, the crystalline lens, and there is some cataract. It's not a severe cataract, it's a relatively mild cataract. But the advantage we have here for the surgeon is the patient's 70 years old and there is no more accommodation. So this patient, to go from a pre-op refraction of plus five diopters of hyperopia and minus two diopters of corneal astigmatism, and end up with a refraction of Plano, and then have the multifocality provide the extended range of vision, including a near focal point, that's going to make this patient very happy. So yes, we're taking out a relatively mild cataract in a patient with zero accommodation, and we'll put in our IOL, which will of course correct the refractive error, and while it won't provide accommodation, it will provide a wider range because it's multifocal, give that near point. Now, what about age 50, if the patient's 50 years old? Well, at 50 years old, there still is some accommodation, in fact, quite a reasonable amount. And if the patient has zero cataract, it's going to be a little bit tougher. It's going to take a lot of preoperative counseling so the patient understands the limitations of our current multifocal technology. Now, mind you, the toric technology is great, and we're able to, you know, clean up the astigmatism quite nicely. But our challenge is, again, is the multifocality a reasonable option for someone who has a mild degree of accommodation, such as a 50-year-old? I think that's the gray zone. A 50-year-old could be pretty happy with this lens. It just depends on the patient's approach to this, the patient's attitude. Are they willing to make some compromises, achieve pretty good near vision in exchange for freedom, for the most part, from glasses or contact lenses? Then we're good. If the patient has a perfectionist mindset, I think then at age 50, you've got to be very careful here. And then finally, the last one is age 30. At age 30, I'd be very cautious. Yes, there are some 30-year-olds where this is an appropriate um, surgical solution. But you have to really make sure of that in advance. So this surgery is quick. This is hardly six minutes in total. But you'll probably have to do 10 or 20 times that much preoperative consultation, an hour or two hours of preop consultation, to make sure a 30-year-old patient is going to accept this. And I think more times than not, a 30-year-old, you probably should avoid doing the eyeball surgery if they have a totally clear lens, no cataract, good accommodation, and they can tolerate contacts. Now, there are special situations. What if the 30-year-old really can't tolerate contacts? What if they're very, very hyperopic? Well, all these things are additional factors that can be taken into account. But in our case here, luckily, we have it a lot easier. This patient's 70 years old. No accommodation at all, and on top of that, we're, we're treating a, a mild, mild cataract, but also a quite a substantial refractive error. Again, the pre-op uh, uh, refraction was plus five, minus two, 
at pretty close to um, a flat axis of 180, therefore a steep axis of just about 90 degrees. And here we're lining up that torque lens at those marks. And you can see the dots on the torque lens. We'll line that up precisely. There are marks on the cornea, which is what we're aligning it with. And we're using the Purkinje images to uh, make sure the IOL is in good position. We want it centered as well as on the correct steep axis. So concealing the incision here, a little balanced salt solution to hydrate that up. And then we'll adjust our light here to give a better red reflex and we can do a final positioning of the IOL. Notice how we do a very modest degree of corneal hydration. You don't want to have so much hydration that it's going to, it, that the hydration itself will cause a, a temporary astigmatic issue. So take it out of the viscoelastic, let's seal everything up in the eye, put the lens optic where we want it, let's center that up, and seal up this paracentesis, adjust the, cam the camera lighting, the microscope lights, and that looks really good. Thanks for watching.